A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. A couple of days ago we celebrated the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day, the 8th of May 1945. On the television it's been fascinating to watch the sheer relief and exuberance of those celebrating, especially in London on that day in 1945. And this was alongside of course the sad and the poignant memories of those who didn't live, live to see the end of the war in Europe. I heard from someone recently, someone whose father was a military padre during the war, and he slipped away from the celebrations and actually found a church where he quietly remembered those of his friends and colleagues who had died. Well, there were certainly huge celebrations and rejoicing at the prospect of peace and security once more, and we continue to be grateful to all those who served in the armed forces and indeed what is referred to as the whole wartime generation who defeated the real threat to democracy and freedom from the forces of Na the Nazis and of fascism that had inflicted such cruel brutality on the world. And it's interesting to note the vast crowds on VA, uh, VE Day alongside our own socially distanced commemorations. But as the Queen reminded us, our streets are not empty they are filled with the love and the care that we have for each other, she said. And indeed, many people found ways of, rejoice, of uh, rejoicing and joining with neighbours to celebrate, but in a responsible and a socially distanced way. And we've also generally seen how so many have sought to help and care for the more vulnerable in our neighbourhoods over the last couple of months. Our sense of community is always an important part of our humanity and as a Christian I believe that we are not made to be independent of each other. God has made us to live in community and relationship with each other, reflecting the very nature of God. And we see this in our passage today from John's Gospel. Jesus says in verse 10, Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. The words I say to you are not just my own, rather it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. 
And one of the foundations of our faith is that we know and experience God in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and that there is a relationship between them that we see in the work of Jesus, who often speaks of his Father, and also of the Counselor or the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will be sent to the disciples. We may find it difficult to understand, to get our head around the Trinity, but it's certainly a reality that's there in the New Testament. And if we believe that we are made in God's image, it means that we are made for relationship with others, just as we believe that we are made to love because God is love and that we are to uphold justice because God is just. And from this relationship with God, we're invited to be in relationship with him through Jesus. So when Jesus says in this passage, I am the way, the truth and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, he is saying that the way to finding the ultimate truth and fulfilment in life is through being in relationship with him. To live as a Christian is to live in a relationship with God, with all that that involves, in how we live our lives. And I always like the wonderful prayer of St Augustine, where he prays, O God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. But of course we must remember that we are made not only for relationship with God, but for relationship with each other. So coming to know Jesus also means becoming part of his family, the body of his followers, his church, his community. Being a Christian is not just a personal and individual thing, it involves being drawn into a relationship with those thousands and millions of other followers of Jesus and being part of the fellowship of believers. And here we meet together for encouragement and to share with and learn from one another. And of course we know that these relationships between one another in the family of the church and with Jesus don't always happen in a neat and an orderly way. So often people are drawn into the life of the church first through a warm welcome and then they begin to believe. And so it's really important that we remember the importance, for example, of our hospitality as a church and our welcome to all who come to us. And that is not altered by not being able to use our buildings at the moment because we are still the church and we're still living and working and worshipping as the church. Relationship with God and relationship with one another is at the very heart of our faith. And so as we thank God for his blessings to us and to our nation in the past, we also pray that we may remember that as we belong to the Lord and rejoice in his love, we are also called to love and to serve one another. Remembering to pray the collect for today. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a prayer for peace as we remember VE Day. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and, pre and peace proceed, kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquillity your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we remember those who 
served during the Second World War. A prayer for those who serve in our armed forces today. O Lord God of hosts, stretch forth, we pray, your almighty arm to strengthen and protect our servicemen and women. Support them in times of conflict and in their rest and training, keep them safe from all evil. Endure them with courage and loyalty and grant that in all things they may serve without reproach through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, once again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this and may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.